SMT Nation, thanks for tuning into this video. I've got incredible news for you that I'm going to share, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect a lot of people in a great way. We're talking about hundreds of millions of subscribers of wireless companies across the nation. This is a C-band update that is great. So if you're AT&T, T-Mobile, and especially a Verizon customer, this is especially exciting. Uh, we've got C-band that's going to be deployed in a grand scale over the next couple of years. So before we do that, if it's your first time here, consider subscribing and turning on the bell notification so you never miss an upload. All right, so T-Mobile is way out ahead in mid-band 5G deployments. They've got dedicated channels of uh, low-band and mid-band uh, 5G, and they're doing incredible things with it, adding tons of capacity. They're scaling the upgrades. Now, Verizon and AT&T haven't been able to do so because they don't possess those types of assets at this time. Everything's really on the LTE side. So you got Verizon, grand scale, trying to deploy millimeter wave, until they get mid-band and then AT&T, you know, picking their spots, doing millimeter wave, and then just upgrading the network, generally speaking, on the LTE side. For the most part, that's where we're at now anyways with non-standalone 5G and all of that. Once we go standalone, it's a different story. But this news is huge because we have our first speed test from Verizon in regards to C-band testing. All right, so I've got a couple of screenshots. This is over from a Telegram post. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you guys use that platform or if you've seen these things before, but this is Verizon. So this is going to be their ultra wideband 5G using C-band. They also use millimeter wave. Now, in terms of the results, things are looking pretty good. Uh, we've got N77. That's going to be the C-band, uh, you know, band channel. And the RSRP in this specific test was at minus 82. So that's kind of ideal whenever, you know, engineers or just the hobbyists look for testing to see what the theoretical capacity and throughput of the testing will be. They like to keep it in that range, right? Right around the 80 uh, dBm. Sinar looks pretty clean. Sometimes they like to see that a little bit higher, closer to 20, but it's there at about 14. And you will see the metrics there. It's, it performed really well. All right, so you'll see the NR side, the 5G side, they got a throughput of 843 megabits per second. This is a 60 megahertz channel, just like what Verizon is going to be deploying for the first year, year and a half of their deployments. So AT&T is going to have like 40 megahertz temporarily. All right, so AT&T is going to go ahead and get their 40 megahertz going. Verizon is going to do their 60 megahertz. It's mostly going to be national in those two instances. And then uh, T-Mobile's got their spots that they'll be deploying 40 megahertz of this at a later time in the second phase of spectrum. And then in that same second phase, Verizon is going to add a ton more spectrum. Uh, so they're going to go from 60 megahertz up to about 160 in most instances. Some places 180, some places 200, 140. It kind of depends. Uh, in some places, AT&T is going to go from 40 to 80. I think in some cases, they've got 100. You know, So you could see that there's going to be incredible capacity here. Just based on this preliminary testing, things look pretty good. Uh, some other things that I noticed is you'll see that it is combining uh, some LTE carriers. So you'll see, um, oh, I think it was what, band 66 is on there for 20 megahertz. You'll see band 2 for 10 megahertz. And then you'll see band 5 for 10 megahertz. So it is combining with LTE, and the LTE side's given some capacity too. All right, so we're going to see gigabit speed apparently from Verizon on the theoretical. This is not real world, like there's not, this is not commercial where you got users on the network. Uh, so it's not going to be exactly the same, but I do think this is pretty encouraging. Uh, some other elements from the screenshot that was posted uh, in some of the disclosures. This was testing on the Snapdragon Insider phone, which is essentially a developer phone. It's not really, you know, for the average user. Most people won't be buying this device. And this phone was also rooted. So you can get access to that Network Guru uh, stats page. And, uh, you know, there it is. You know, you, you got yourself some N77. Uh, so interesting testing. I think a lot of people are very happy to see this. We should expect to see similar results from Verizon once this goes live and commercial, although I don't expect it to be, you know, as fast in commercial deployment. I do expect it to be pretty good. Uh, shouldn't have any issues getting five, six, seven hundred megabits per second. 8, 900 megabits per second once you start seeing, you know, the LT carriers at it as well. And, you know, you're going to have a more densified millimeter wave grid. You're going to have upgrades to LTE as well as they modernize sites. Backhaul is going to get pushed up higher, and we should see some good results from AT&T and Verizon. And then as soon as the rest of the network assets are available to be deployed and those licenses clear and the channels get wider, 
We're also going to be seeing improvements in networking technologies as the vendors and their firmware continue to evolve. The speeds are going to be great. Now is the time to really start thinking about upgrading a 5G device once this stuff goes live. It is time. If you've been holding off, if you've got an older iPhone or older Android and it's not 5G compatible, now is the time to start putting that on your radar. Most people know you need the, the C-band to scale, you need mid-band to scale, and they're right. And here it is. So let me know what you guys think of the testing. Let me know what you think of this information. I thought it was uh, pretty interesting, and I'm happy to see this. I know some people were worried at the onset of early testing, but it looks like maybe that early testing didn't have the band fully powered, uh, the testing conditions, I don't know, whatever the case may be. But again, we're going to wait for the real world usage. We'll see how far this stuff travels. We'll look at the propagation characteristics, how it works indoors, and how they densify. All those things are wild cards. We'll have to wait and see. But this is very encouraging. This is very fun, exciting times for all the carriers in C-band. Anyways, let me know what you think of the testing. Sound, uh, sound off in the comment section below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. And do like and share this video if you want to help the channel out. That does help tremendously. Thank you so much. Check out the links in the description box, the Patreon. Also have the Twitter handle, uh, my contact info, all that stuff. We got it going on there. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new and have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.